So converting large numbers is uh, is a lot easier. Obviously, we can just latch on to this to this um, <clears throat> to this to this technique we've been taking advantage of. You just group them into nibbles, um, and then that's it. Convert uh, the grouped numbers into equivalent. Uh, 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 oh, this is a uh, binary to decimal, right? Uh, pretty trivial, right? Uh, you, did we not do binary to decimal? I thought we did. Ooh, aha, good stuff. Now, this is, so here's the thing. This is another method, right? So if you remember, when we're converting binary to decimal, what we were doing was we repeatedly multiplying. I don't know if you remember what we're saying. Said, what we did last time, right? We were saying that if if we had a number like this, yeah, and this is a large number, right? Uh, observe to convert this number into decimal, right? When we're converting a large number into decimal, our our current approach has been that we we wow we okay is that we. Okay, so we 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 repeatedly multiply, right? One, wait a minute, why is this thing? Okay, so uh, we repeatedly multiply this, right? So we have one, zero, one, three ones, which is one, two, three, uh, two zeros. And then we have one, zero, one, zero. What we're saying, right? What we're saying is that uh, we, we sorry about the noise, I don't know if I said this, they decided to have a pool party somewhere close to where we live, right? So we're waiting at better or something, I don't know. Um, whatever that means. But anyway, so for us to convert this to decimal, what we're saying is we have to repeatedly, uh, we, we repeatedly multiply this, right? Using the powers of uh, two here, is it? Two to power, we have the powers of two, it's zero. Now, I don't know how you'd write this, but it's zero, one, two. I guess we can drag this like Mr. Malima taught us in spreadsheet application. Ooh, we're going back in the opposite direction. I guess we can use formulas like he told us. So we will say, have you looked at formulas in uh, EDU 1010? 10, 10? 10, 20, Not yet. Oh, I'm sure you will anyway. Okay, so, so observe, right? So what we're saying here is, uh, and I'll just highlight these in yellow so that they don't distract, they don't distract us. So what we're saying is this is going to be two to power, two to power zero, all the way up to here, right? This is, this is a method we've come up with, right? When we're converting binary to decimal. And then what do we do? We multiply these with the evaluated powers of two. So it's, it's going to be one times, times uh, 2048. Uh, and then we can drag this formula here, right? And then finally, we just add, and then we use the sum. They'll teach you these formulas, which is quite nice, I guess. Uh, so the answer is, wow, this is, we, none of us would be alive in the year 3018, right? This is 3018. Uh, at least I know I won't be alive when I don't want to. Maybe they'll discover something like life extension or something. So here's the thing. This is a method we are, we are using to convert binary to decimal. But what we are saying here is that there's an easier method for you to, but at least for me, it's much easier. When you are converting large binary numbers to decimal, instead of doing this, I've, I've tried to close the windows and they're still screaming and shouting, right? If instead of doing this, what you can do is you get your number, this number here, and then you, you break it down into nibbles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the next step is you convert each one of these nibbles into the equivalent hexadecimal numbers. And then you convert the hexadecimal numbers into decimal. Now here's the thing, right? The idea behind this is that it's a lot easier for you to convert from hex to decimal than from binary to decimal for large numbers. Think about this for a second, right? If not for a second, then maybe sleep over it tonight or something. Instead of watching those mindless movies, think about what I just spoke about here. Right, so what we're saying is there's two options, right? The first option is uh, 
you can do what we've been doing where you repeatedly multiply. Um, but, but the option that we're advoc advocating for right now is we're saying we can group the binary digits in groups of fours or something, right? Uh, so we group them into groups of fours and then we convert the groups of fours into um, the equivalent decimal and then we have, uh, and this is reputation, I guess, it's equivalent uh, uh, hexadecimal numbers and then, um, and this is supposed to be decimal anyway. Uh, so you have your decimal number and then you convert it to, to uh, its equivalent hexadecimal number. Right, so two-step process. You first of all convert the binary number into hex because it's a lot easier. You just break it up into groups of fours or nibbles, right? You have your hex number and then you get your hex number and you convert that hex number into decimal. How do you do this? Repeated multiplication by converting the symbols into their decimal equivalent and then multiplying them by their powers of 16. And in fact, at this stage really, you could have multiplied them with powers of 16. Do you understand this? This is much easier. Yes, sir. Flip over this, do a simple test, right? Try and see how long it's gonna take you to convert a large binary number into decimal using this conventional method we introduced at the beginning. And then try and see how long it's gonna take you for you to use this method we, we are talking about right now, right? I don't know. Uh, at some stage in life you choose, right? Life is all about decisions. Uh, if you decide to use this method, method to where you convert direct from binary to decimal, that's fine. Uh, what I think is more appealing to me might not be appealing to you, right? Uh, but the only way you find out is if you experiment with these things, right? But don't experiment with stealing or any bad vice. All right, so this is what we're talking about here, right? Where you repeatedly multiply and then you get this. Now, the, the reason why you want to avoid this, right? The reason why you want to avoid this is because it is error prone. It's very easy for you to make a mistake when you're dealing with a lot of bits. Very easy. Uh, our eyes sometimes will make us see things that are not there. I hope you've realized this by now. All right. Um, and then obviously this is it. But take your pick, whatever works for you. Right. Uh, again, here yeah, just trying to, to, to point out that... Uh, a common pitfall, and I think I mentioned this, is to try and misrepresent the answers that you're getting, right? So if you break up a binary number like this into, uh, into nibbles and then you convert it like this, you have six, seven. Some people make the mistake of thinking that this six, seven is base 10. In actual fact, it is not base 10. You need to convert this into, this is base 16, you convert it into base 10, right? Assuming you're converting from, let's say, binary to base 10, for instance. It's very easy when your answer, the number you're dealing with has a, uh, has symbols that are shared with uh, base 10, 